Hey guys, Mr. Kennedy here, back with another Blender video for you. In our last video, we created a low poly terrain, sort of like what you can see behind me. Um, and this is going to be, this is teaching you some skills that you're going to use in an upcoming project. We want to try and develop this terrain a little bit more. So last time we looked at creating this plane and giving it a bit of a randomized, not squared, poly polygonal surface I suppose and then I showed you how to color those surfaces and move them around to get this to sort of look a bit more natural so what we want to do now is we want to try and add some more details here what we want to add specifically in this uh, particular video is we're going to try and add some water into the kind of lakes or valleys that you might have in your terrain um, and you may need to add those to get it to work but whatever that's what we're going to look at it's a little bit tricky um, at least the way that I've figured out how to do it. So stick with me, feel free to pause, rewind and, and play the video a few times. And if you get stuck, contact me and I'll try and sort you out. But let's jump in here and we'll see what we can do. So here's our plane or our, our terrain where I got up to last time. And the first thing that I need to do here is I just need to make sure that I actually have a, a, a lake, a, an area of my terrain here that's going to be a lake. So I've just jumped into edit mode. You'll remember, of course, that we had uh, proportional editing on and we have this thing set to smooth and then I'm just going to grab a section of whoops what's going on here sorry I'm just going to grab make sure I'm on face select mode I'm just going to grab a, a few polygons here I'm going to move them down okay and that'll do me these are the ones that I'm going to try and turn this section here that's now low land. There's a low in the land. And I'm going to try and make here some water. Now, basically, <clears throat> the in a nutshell version of what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come out of edit mode. I'm pretty much just going to add a new plane. I'm going to scale it up so that it will fill that area. And then I'm going to move it down so that it kind of just sticks through where I've got that low in the land. And so you can see now this white plane or gray or whatever color that is, that's what I'm gonna turn into look like water. Now, huge amount of different ways that you can do this. Obviously I'm going for a low poly look, so I'm gonna, I don't want this to look like a realistic wavy bumpy water, although there are plenty of video tutorials online, not mine, but there are plenty of video tutorials online if you wanna do that on yours instead. I'm gonna go for a pretty similar look here, which means I need to use the same method of displacing the surface here to get this poly polygonal look. So I'm gonna jump into edit mode, right click, choose subdivide, and I might go for a bit more detail here so that it's got a bit smaller um, bumps on the water, but it's still fairly low poly. You can do whatever you like. So I'm going to go for 45. Um, and now I need to do the same method of changing this object, of modifying this object, like we did in our initial plane, by using two modifiers, a displacement modifier and a decimate modifier. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to come out of edit mode back into object mode while I've got that plane selected. I'm going to come to modifiers. I'm going to add a displace modifier. I'm going to hit new texture, come to my texture tab, change the type to clouds. And then over here on my object, I can choose control A, rotation and scale. Come back to my modifier here and change the strength to about 0.5. That's the first thing that we did. And then I added a second modifier, which is a decimate modifier. And I'll change the strength on that as well to about 0.5. And then I'm gonna apply both of these. Okay, so that's sort of already giving me this randomized texture appearance. You can see I've got, because now this surface is not flat, it's not a flat plane, it's bumpy. I've got some sections of the water here that are sticking through where I don't want them to. So to fix that, I'm just gonna jump into edit mode. I'm just gonna double press A to unselect all. I'm gonna grab those few planes and I'm just sort of sneakily gonna move them down. And I can do this to whatever bits of the plane that I want to, to get the water to sit how I like. You can play with that if you want. You could go, you know, you could undo, and in those sections where you are adding modifiers, you could reduce the strength of those to make this a bit flatter, uh, because I think this is a little bit, 
a little bit strong and a little bit too bumpy. So for example, if I undo back here, so I've, I've undoed all the way back to before I applied these modifiers. So now I've got these back as editable modifiers and I can just drop these strengths down further. If I change them, for example, both down to 0 0.3, my water is now a little bit flatter when I apply it. You can see it's still there, but it's just a bit flatter and I think that looks better. Now, we want to start coloring it. So obviously you can come over to your materials tab and choose new and you can change your base color. Assuming you've got your display mode here set to the one that looks like a beach ball, the, the material mode or whatever it's called, viewport shading, you can change your color to start getting that blue sort of watery appearance. Now, the problem here, I mean, if that's what you want, that's how you want it to look fine. If you're going for a low poly, uh, you know, that sort of really gamified appearance where it's a solid, a solid thing, fine, you might leave it there. If you want your water to be transparent though, there are a number of steps here um, where we introduce a few sort of complicated things, but we can get this to work. So what we need to do first, if you want to make your water transparent, is you need to click on Use Nodes. And now we need to open a node editor. You can just use the timeline window that's down here. So drag this up and then use your little drop down here to change this from, um, at the moment you're looking at timeline, we want to look at Texture Node Editor. I think. No, sorry, it's Shader Editor is the one that we want. So in this drop down, you want to choose Shader Editor. And these are the two default nodes. It's not as confusing as it looks. All of the things that you see here are exactly the options that you currently are seeing over here. So you've got, you know, base color. You've got all of the same stuff here um, that you have before. And you don't need to understand all of this unless you want to. You could go and Google around and try and learn a lot of this. But what I want you to do is pretty much just do what I'm doing in order to get your object here to be transparent. Now we need to add two more nodes to make this thing transparent. The first one we're going to add is a transparent sort of a, a transparent shader to tell Blender that we want this thing to be transparent. So we're going to add a transparent BSDF. So to do that within your node window, you go add shader transparent BSDF and then just click and it will be there. And we also want a trans uh, add shader mix shader. Okay, now these two shaders are there and pretty much what we want to do is we need to have our mix shader here in between in between the original principled BSDF and your material output. If you can't get those to link up just by dragging it around like I did, these lines, you can just click on the green dots and kind of disconnect those. And then you could click on this green dot next to BSDF and drag it over to one of the shader inputs. So these are on the right hand side of this box are outputs and on the left hand side of this box are inputs. So on the left hand side of this box is an input and here is an output. So you want the output from your original principled BSDF, which is the default one. You want the output from that little green dot to one of the two shader inputs on mix shader. And we want the output here from mix shader to go to material to the surface input on this box, which is called material output. And then we want this transparent BSDF box. It doesn't matter where the box is sitting, by the way, you don't need to drag it to the same spot as I am, but we just want to connect to the BSDF output here to the other shader input over there. Okay, now this will pretty much do it. There's only one more setting that I need to change here. If you come back while well, you've got your plane selected and you're in your material view here, you want to come, this might be minimized or shrunk down here by default, you want to come to your settings thing, the little settings drop down. So I've got my plane selected. I've come over here to the material properties little beach ball tab. You want to find settings and you want to go to blend mode. And I believe you can choose any of these three that say alpha. I'm going to go with alpha blend. And that should be it. Now, if we come back to our node tab, uh, or you can also do this, I believe, in this one of these tabs up here. 
I'm going to do it over here in my node tab. If you sort of you need to scroll it, zoom out or use your you know pan down here. I'm doing that by clicking down my scroll wheel on my mouse and just panning down. And I believe now we can just grab our alpha channel and drag that down, and that should pretty much do it. Uh, but this is not applying the color. So I've got my colors. I'm just going to pretty much change all of these to a blue color. Wherever there's a color option, I'll change it to a blue color and we'll see how we go there. Okay, now if I flick that to a rendered mode, hmm, okay, that's not working. I'll just pause the video and I'll figure out what's going on. Okay, I think I'm back recording again. Now, all I actually did there to fix this, I I noticed that over here where I was editing my uh, my material, the the base color that was listed here was white, and so all I did was click on the Use Nodes button, and that then meant that it picked up everything that I had set here, and now you can see on my viewport that that water has gone a bit transparent. Um, if you're here still in beach ball view mode, it might look like this. You could also flick that to sort of a rendered mode, and then the lights will come into effect, and you start to get some depth here where you know the water, you know, you move this around, and obviously you've got some shadows and stuff being cast because of the where the bottom of your little water valley is here. So now to get a, a good screenshot of that, we want to move our camera to be looking at it. So like we did in the last video, we select your camera and say, you know, uh, oh, you just want to, sorry, go view, viewpoint camera. And then what I showed you last time is while we're looking through the camera, you can choose view, navigation, walk, and then you can just sort of use your WSAD keys here. Whoops, I'm hitting spacebar and it's going crazy. It's just going to take me a minute to move this all the way over there um, using the WSAD key, but you get the idea. Uh, so once I've got this camera in position, I should be able to render out a nice image of what this water looks like, and that's going to do it for this video. I'll put my finished render at the end here, and uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.